Greetings, Mars here, and welcome to episode 144 of my modded Factorio playthrough. In this episode, we are going to start producing that alien bacteria that we've been working on. Enjoy. We've got the calcium carbonate, we've got the hydrochloric acid, and we have polluted fish water, we'll just need to deliver it, but we totally can. I think we're pretty good. The sulfuric wastewater can be sent to somewhere else. I mean, we could process it there, but the purified water won't really have any chance of getting used. But if we send it somewhere like over here, it might actually get processed into something because we do use quite a bit of purified water for all of that coat processing. So that said, the setup should probably be somewhere around here somewhere. And we can use this line to create a train station wherever we need it to be. And this is fairly straightforward of a setup. Let's get that hydro plant in there. You know, just six to ten. So we can just pick up the items that we need and then just build it on site because I don't think we need to be too careful with this design. So somewhere around here. Let's see, there is this gap in here. But we probably don't want to use any of it for if slash when this setup gets wider. So we want to consider this as like the lower limit of where we can go. We might have to put it here and then have a long pipe coming back here. Well, the train station is probably going to be a fairly limiting element to this. So you probably want to build that first just to get it out of the way. Looking delightfully not straight. Hmm. I wonder if it would fit. I think that's in line. Will it turn? It's so close. There we go. If we're willing to move this over a little bit. We can get one more in here. There we go. One more in there. And actually probably could put a few of them going the other direction in here if we wanted to. So we've got to have 10 hydro plants cleaning up the fish water. Let's have them going down here. We do have a symmetrical number of them. I did notice though that this is making 150 alien spores a second. Although strangely enough, the alien spores is actually a liquid. I was like, that's a lot of belts, but it's a liquid. See, I switched to belt here and it changes that up there, but not there. So that is not an item. Then we have six of these making the bacteria where it's one input, one output. And both of which operate quite slowly. Let's see, and the spacing of this is pretty good. But let's try to line this up with the inputs. Like right there. And then this can be kind of lined up with that right there. We don't exactly uh, need drones here anymore. Because that can go straight in. And got to connect everything, got to get our new acid up there, which I think is going to be a new pipe. Just a very long one. And there it is right there. Again, even more contributing to the zigzag here. Fortunately, I think this is still in effect because it is being used to deliver resources back to the old main bus. So we probably still want to keep that hooked up. And this one also might be kind of annoyingly difficult to get in here, but I think we can make it work by going the other direction. There we go. And finally, here's where all the acids are going to be. Let's grab a petrochem tank as a nice buffer. And that should fill up fairly readily. Let's get all this rehooked up. Then a fairly annoying pipe is to run all of that wastewater, but I don't know if I want to run it 
down here because there's already so much going on with all these pipes. And this isn't really something that's going to be sent on like a pipe bus, so... Let's try... I just took it up right here. It's not in the way of too much stuff. And let's do... Another inline tank. With a pump here. Just to make sure it makes its way down there. It doesn't clog this part of the system up. And then... A supply depot. To pick up all these spores. And uh, how many? Three per second? So... Maybe like two drones. And that should all be set up. Now we just need to... Get the resources in here. So as far as the logistics... What we need to get in here. Most of this looks like it's pretty well set up. We do need to have a better system for this mud because you see it's building up now so we have a mud surplus. But we also want to try to get the saline water in here if possible so we'll want to build a train station for that. And I would like to try to use up the factory's nutrient pulp. I'll kind of go through the math on that in a second but it looks like this area right here is fantastic for a train station because we can just have this come all the way out here and then boom right here so we'll have three liquid trains one for polluted fish water one for saline water and one for nutrient pulp and i've never even attempted to do a dynamic train station for liquids before like hmm could it work Potentially, but it might not be the correct situation for this, but just as an idea of how it would work Is you would have your dynamic train station with pumps here So no matter what fluid came in they would unload it and you'd probably have Another pump so let's say This set this series of pipes here was the common pipe rail here well, then you would have looks like we're out of resources but you'd have a couple of different pumps here for the different resources. I think that would work, but I'm not sure if that would count as multiple liquids in the same pipe. But they would basically be connected to the LTN train station. So when the train came in and it said, I have this resource, then the relevant pump for that resource would turn on. So I've never tried to do it that way. I don't know if it would work, but it's also probably not really relevant because the problem is, is those trains are all going to need to have a depot to stay at. And it doesn't really work when all these trains are going to be coming from different locations because I think we determined this would be a great place for the saline water train. You know, and then here's the train for the the bacteria, then the fish water. Actually, we'll probably will want to put another train in here. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's going to work with that there. It, it might because we're going to want to try to get this mineral pulp. So since these trains are coming from all over the place, it probably doesn't make much sense to make them LTN in this situation. We'll just make them uh, one at a time here. So we need to get these other trains set up. I was kind of wondering about this where it seems like it's trying to go at full blast, but there's not enough sand going through. It seems like it needs to be like two belts worth. Of course, there's probably a quick retrofit to this. And that's just to put some long-handed inserters on these machines to give them a chance to output both directions if they need to. So that's a pretty dirty way of doing it. Does it help? Kind of. I think we just might need uh, faster belts here. Actually, I wonder if it would help to have red belts coming up through here. Just want to make sure we're getting the full output out of this. It, of course, it's kind of slowing down now, I think, but that looks pretty good. I noticed that I think the ratio to this is a little wrong, where we've got these five right here making 75 nutrient pulp a second. But then we have all of these buildings, which consumes 262 nutrient pulp. So it seems like there's way too many of these. So let's check the math here, and let's not worry about all of this, let's just assume we've got these five uh, filtration units here making the fuel oil. We've got five of those, let's make sure we don't have like the second tier of those. 
So we had lots of upgrades recently. And then this nutrient pulp gets converted. So it seems like we only need 1.5, so I'm not sure. It could just be where, at the time, Helmod was linked to the wrong thing. Maybe it was linking to fuel oil? And I think, uh... Yeah, maybe it was linking to fuel oil instead of this raw vegetable oil. But we only need 1.5 of them, not all of this. So we might as well clear this out. Those two machines are only going to be making 45 fuel oil a second. And considering we have the capacity to use 350, it's not going to be that big a deal to not include this. So... Let's put an overflow valve in here, so only if it's overloaded will it go through. And this still is a way to generate glycerol if we ever need it, but at least now we won't be wasting this fluid and the glycerol anymore. Because I just, I hate burning things away. I always want it to be closed loop if possible. We're still wasting some mineral oil, which is a little annoying. But we are uh, consuming all of that extra that we already had. So, yeah, we're at 7.2k, so we're working on it, but... One thing at a time. Can't uh, have a perfect closed loop factory. Can only get kinda close. Even 45 is still a significant amount. That's, you know, a drone every five seconds or a drone every 10 seconds or something like that. That's, that's a pretty decent number of drones. So that's probably worth making a train for. And now we have a train station to actually copy. So let's see if we can copy this over here somewhere. And will it work? Seems like it. Then we can line it up down here as well. Technically, this train won't stay parked here, so it's not the most efficient place to put fuel. But the other two trains will stay parked down here. So if we fueled the train up here, it would be all by itself. And we'd have to make a drone request just for that one train. I'm not sure that uh, makes a lot of sense. We'll have to see if there's any other trains that go up there. But for now... <laughs> we can connect to the rocket fuel in here. And uh, that seems to work. And we'll set this to... Nutrient pulp load. Now we have some potentially long pipes. And let's just follow the road. We'll put another pump in here on the receiving end. And we don't need to worry about these all filling up equally or anything. This is just a byproduct, so eventually they'll all get full. And these pumps are the wrong direction. And then when they're full, the train will make its journey. It's two out of the three trains. Now this sailing train might potentially uh, do a heck of a lot of work. We need to get a train in here. And honestly, having a roundabout would be kind of nice, but just have to make do with what we got. It's going to be a bit of a long path here, but we do have rocket fuel here already, so we can send it up. Well, we don't want it to be set to the same thing as this is, so they're not fighting, so it'll be a little lower. So probably like uh, 30k. And unfortunately, the level is actually lower than that, so we won't be able to see this in action. And set this to saline water load. Okay, we've got all the trains and machines in play. So now we just need to set it up in the remote base. Okay, well, we got our road already in place here, so we just need to continue it. Let's bring the road up to about here. So now we have a tricky little situation here, because we have mud that we potentially could generate here, and we potentially could require here. So we're going to need to have both a request depot and a supply depot here. And to keep them from interacting with each other negatively, we're going to do something like this. But at least this time we won't have to have a wire going halfway across the map. 
We could just use these two uh, depot riders here. So this is the request depot, which will be... But going this direction. This will be mud going the other way. Kind of really want to make a storehouse here. Because we got a lot of resources moving around in here, so we would make it a little easier. If this was a bigger building, then we'll have some logic here. And let's say the low point for the building is a thousand. So we connect this here and say, if mud is less than a thousand, let some in to top it off. And this one right here, we can say, if mud is over 10,000, dump it, which is not the case. So this will have a fairly wide working level, but if it gets to an extreme, it will start taking resources from these supply depots. We can put a combinator in here. We'll actually read the status of the supply depot here, because most of the time this is going to be supplying mud as opposed to requesting it. The supply depot will turn on and off based on whether or not this thing has any mud in it. So we'll put some logic here. So if mud is greater than 400, which is a drone's worth, output a green square, which means we want this, this depot to be on. So we'll put the wire through there, which means if green square is greater than zero, turn on. But this other one, green square has to be zero for that one to turn on. So now, Similar to how it was before, only one or the other of those should be on at any given time. And we can kind of test this by generating a test signal. So let's do mud and 500 mud. So you see when this flicks on and off, it's alternating these depots, which means it's working as intended. So in its default state, if there's no excess mud, this depot will request some mud, probably like two drones worth, and it will move up here and then get blocked here. So although it's making a request for mud, it's not going to be a constant request because once it gets to this depot, it's going to stop. And any excess mud, if it exists, will be sent down in here. But in order to prevent a feedback loop where these two are just like dumping mud into each other. We've got this alternating setup here, so only one or the other will work. And that should be pretty good. So we'll set that to mud and put two drones in there. And that should take care of the mud. It should uh, self-balance itself out now. So we need to make a few train stations here. Well, the exact position of the train station might matter on kind of where that rail goes. Well, this would be a good spot for a roundabout. Uh, and we probably need to do this same setup near where mud's being produced because it's not sending any drones. And I don't think we have a supply depot down there. So we'll probably need to do something very similar to this down there. So we'll want one going up somewhere around here, but uh, roundabout might be nice. They're easier to expand later, for sure. A little bit harder to drive on manually, but we don't do much of that these days. Here's our mud generator. Looks like we've been generating a little bit of landfill. See, I kind of want to use the same blueprint here. So let's just plop this in here. Okay, we'll set this to greater than zero, except this is a little different than the other one because we've got to run a really long wire down here. Basically, if the depot at the faraway base requests mud, 
then that's when this will supply it and it will turn off this requester. So right now, since there's no request, then the standard dump applies, but if there's a request, it will alternate. And then this one will turn on. Wow, that mud setup is still crazy. Well, we've got a very long wire to run here. We've got to be careful not to cross paths with any other cables. And boom, we finally got that connected. We need to set this up, so decide our combinator. We probably will need the transport depot reader. Reading mud. If mud is less than 400, which is a drone's amount, output one mud. See, there's an output, so when we connect this, it's sending a mud signal, which if we go down here, has inverted this. So now this supply depot is now supplying mud. And uh, it already happened, but there goes a drone. So that should be set up properly. Hopefully there won't be any loops. Let's get these train stations in here. See, we got saline water being filled up here. But if we have a train, we'll want that train to fill it up all the way. So let's use this one down here. And that seems to make sense right here. And this is saline water unload. Time to create a train schedule. Looks like this thing's uh, filled up a tiny bit. Actually, that one filled up all the way. So it has been filling up slightly. It's kind of interesting to look at where the level is 21k now. But it had to be over 30 for this to fill up. And yet, it actually managed to fill up quite a bit. So I think we're dealing with very large amounts of saline water here. But saline water load. Until full. Sailing water load. Until empty. And that will start operating. Let's see, the next one is our nutrient pulp. And it's also got a system here to keep it from being overloaded. So let's just use the same connection right here. We'll just follow along. Nutrient pulp unload. And how is that train doing? What? There's no radar. <sighs> Noted. Well, we got some empty trains here, so it must be this one. So nutrient pulp load. Until full. Unload. Until empty. And look at that. Even though not much has been happening, or at least it doesn't feel like it. It's definitely been filling up. And finally, the important one. Looks like these, actually these pumps are mostly switched the wrong way. But it's time for polluted water load. So we'll go back in here. Must be this one. Polluted fish water load until full. Unload until empty. And it should actually uh, come down here. And when this gets what it needs, it should uh, fly back down there and then we'll see how this whole process works. So I kind of want to take it for a ride. Let's make sure the fish water is set up correctly. Well, there's a pump here and uh, we should put another pump in here just to make sure this whole thing gets emptied, because that is a lot of polluted fish water. And it is going to clog it up so these breeders can't work, but it doesn't matter because they don't need to breed anything until all this is empty. So it should work just fine. So the train made it. I guess we'll follow the uh, nutrient pulp here and another pump to keep the flow going. Lots and lots of pumps. It's interesting that that started running. 
Hmm. Actually, because of that, and the way this works, is that a lot of those are actually going to run. So we don't want to put that there. If we are going to put a pump somewhere, it needs to be on this storage tank up here. So that should uh, work without turning anything on. Seems like it. Hey, it lines up perfectly for once. This should be where the exciting part happens when all this comes together. So let's hook up the pump and see what happens. And it's not connected because it couldn't reach. There we go. So that's filling up. Make sure this is working. It is. It's smashing it out of there. The level is going down a bit, so these are actually going to start running. But that's okay. Seems like the majority of it is still coming out of those tanks right there. So I'm okay with this stuff running a little bit. It'll eventually clear out. It's kind of a long way to move these liquids, so it's actually going to take a little while for the strain to fill up. Plus, these are the upgraded cars, so 38,000 per car, so it actually holds quite a bit. And I see there's some unnecessary undergrounds in there. Okay, let's see how this works. It's got a fairly long path to get to where it needs to go, but... It also goes 400 kilometers an hour, so it should be fine. It's actually kind of no time at all when you consider how much factory it just drove through. So that pretty much instantly unloads the train, and then it's gone. But those are all filling up. Processing. There's our alien bacteria. And it's pushing that sulfuric wastewater down the path. Over here. It's actually processing it since it's not overloaded on it. Probably want a bigger tank here. It might be okay. Because there's a sulfuric wastewater tank here as well. I was just looking at purified water getting filled up. That if this is a potential dump for this process, we want that the normal level of purified water to be quite low. That seems good. We're making our bacteria. So I guess all of that is working pretty well. Let's see, we needed a radar. Train made it back again. That was fast. And now it's in its happy spot. There we go, we can see. It all seems pretty smooth. It's always nice to see everything uh, operating correctly after you have such a long process like this. Of course, this is only one part of an even larger process, <laughs> which is modules. But it's looking good. It looks like it uh, pounded its way through all that uh, artificial fish water. And actually cleared this one out too, so now it's operating completely normally. Look at all that green. Except for that. That's not green. Why is that not green? I guess it doesn't need to be. But that makes sense. Remember, this isn't the only thing we need polluted fish water for. The the fish water actually goes into making the crystals. So we're only using it for bacteria as a side thing. So, it makes sense that we're only using part of this whole setup. But, it's looking good. Let's just make sure we uh, try to see if we can save as much of this sulfuric water as possible. Because now it's starting to build up because there wasn't much room in this system. I'll just pick up this uh, inline tank here. Put it back down. With a pump. Actually, it would be even better we had a full-size tank, just so it has more space. Purified water. It's 
less than 10,000. And we kind of need to be a little uh, creative with these pipe hookups. Let's just have the output of the purifiers there so they can go into this tank. And there they go. They're processing that to make sure that tank is the repository. And then have a pump in here because it might be as low as 10,000, which means it won't have very good flow. So we need to have a pump in there to push it out. And then that's what needs to be connected right here. There we go. Hopefully that saves some of that water. But if not, whatever, it'll get clarified away. Just want to do my part to try. As long as I try, that's good enough for me. It doesn't necessarily have to be successful, just as long as I put a decent effort into it to make it work. Hey, that topped off. That's looking good. Let's uh, take a ride back up top. It's a very green, funny looking train. <laughs> It's so fast. <laughs> Look how fast it goes. That fills it up very quickly. And it's gone. Last thing. So we can clear out all of these tanks. Since the system is working normally now. At least it should be. So this level should be basically going up. See how it is at 80, but this tank is taking a little while to slosh up. Performance might be slightly better with some pumps and additional pipes, but it seems like it's working okay. This tank is empty, which is basically what we want to see. It's a buffer for the breeders. And the lower this tank goes, the more this stuff will actually be operating. I don't know, it seems fine. We'll have to stress test it making crystals to really know for sure if it's good enough. But it's easy enough just to move extra pipes around, put more pumps in, and get it going. But it looks great. And that's the end of this episode. On the next one, we are going to be working on retrofitting our geode setup. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.